I'm gonna be telling you about every single title in Blocks Fruits, as well as some secret titles that you might have not known existed. So the first official title in Blocks Fruits is called The Unleashed, and the way you obtain this is by unlocking Human V2. And similarly, the next title is called Unmatched Speed, and you get this by unlocking Rabbit V2. Next up is the Sea Monster title, and you actually don't get this one by killing a Sea Monster, you get it by unlocking Shark V2. Next up we got Sacred Warrior, and you get this by unlocking Angel V2. Then we get the Ghoul, and this one is pretty self-explanatory, I mean do I even need to say anything? You get it by unlocking Ghoul V2. And then we got the Cyborg, and you also get this one by unlocking Cyborg V2. Now moving on to the V3 for the races. The next one is called Full Power, and you get this by unlocking Human V3. Next up we got Godspeed, and you get this by unlocking Rabbit V3. After that it's Warrior of the Sea, and you get this with Shark V3. Moving on we got Perfect Being, and you get this with Angel V3. And we're already at 10 titles, and we have way more to go. Next up is Hellhound, and you get this by unlocking Ghoul V3. And the next one is War Machine, and you get this by unlocking Cyborg V3. And moving on to the V4 for the races. This one is called Berserker, it's actually the special red color. You get this by unlocking Human V4. Next up is Thunder bolt and you get this by unlocking rabbit v4 moving on we got leviathan which is actually a type of fish and you get this by unlocking shark v4 pretty fitting if you ask me next is his majesty and you get this by unlocking angel v4 the next one is nightwalker and you get this one by unlocking ghoul v4 then it's genesis and you get this by unlocking cyborg v4 and now moving on from races the next one is actually called bounty hunter and to get this one you need to reach either a 5 million bounty or honor and similarly we got pirate hunter which has the exact same requirements it's just a different name depending on whether you're marine or a pirate next is warlord of the sea and you get this one by reaching a 10 million plus bounty then we got emperor of the sea and you get this one by reaching a 20 million plus bounty and you also obviously get empress of the sea with the exact same requirements but keep in mind these titles are only for the pirates for the marines they have a bit different names by getting 10 million honor you actually get the admiral title and by getting 20 million plus honor you get the fleet admiral title moving on from bounties the next the title is called Enlightened One, and you get this by unlocking any awakening, literally any of them. And you also get Awakened One, which you also just need to get any awakening for. Same with Over Heaven and Over Hell. You need any awakening and you literally get four titles. Now moving on to the Awakened Fruits. This one is called Flame Fist, and you get it by awakening the Flame Fruit. Then we got Ice Queen and Ice King, which you actually get by awakening the Ice Fruits. Then we got the Strongest One, which you get by awakening the Quake Fruit. The First Light, pretty self-explanatory, by awakening the Light Fruit. Then we got the Dark Lord, which I think you guys should be able to guess. It's obviously by awakening the Dark Fruit. Then we got the Spider, and you get this one by awakening the Spider Fruit. Then we got Thunder God, and for this one, you need to awaken the Rumble Fruit. Then we got Red Dog, which you need to unlock the Magma Awakening for. Then we got Colossal God, and for this one, you need to unlock the Buddha. This one's actually kind of fitting, because your transformation gets much bigger when you awaken your Buddha. Then we got Desert Prince, and this one is by awakening the Sand Fruit. And then we got Phoenix, and this one is obviously by awakening the Phoenix Fruit. Then we got bread chaser and this one is by completely awakening the dough fruit moving on from fruit awakening we actually got some pretty unique titles here we got devourer of worlds and you get this one by completing the april fools 2023 event next is venlord toad and you also get this one by completing the april fools 2023 event next up is the youtuber title and for this one it's pretty self-explanatory you just got to be a big enough creator and the blocks fruits devs have to recognize you to give you the title then we got a squad and you get this one by defeating the youtuber the great ace moving Moving on, we got officially a noob, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber official newbie. And then we got Water Gang, and you get by defeating the YouTuber Digrock. Then we got Don Axori Family, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber Axori. Next up, we got Mafia Gang, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber Bloxy Gaming. Next up is the Herora Family, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber Herora. Next up is Magic Slayer, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber Magic Buzz. The next one is called Kit Kat, and you get this one by defeating Kit Gaming. Then we got Team JC, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber JCWK. Then we got El Combo God, and you get this one by defeating the YouTuber Fur999. Then we got Nakuma Forever, and you get this one by defeating me and you. Next, we got Loka Roger, and you get this one by defeating Roger underscore N. Next up, we got El Crazy Editor, and you get this one by defeating the content editor Zeolus. Next up is two similar titles, and first one is called Rip underscore Family. And to get this one, all you have to do is join the Roblox group Rip underscore Family and receive a higher role. And it's the exact same thing thing for the next one which is red underscore legion you just have to join the roblox group and get a higher role moving on from groups and youtubers we got one called justice seeker and you get this one by claiming a bounty as a marine 
Next up, we got something that you should all have when you enter the game, which is Empty Vessel. And you get this one by running out of energy. Then we got the Unlucky, and all you have to do is die to a regular enemy. Pretty simple if you ask me. Then we got the Vanquished, where you just have to die to a boss. Then we got Fallen Hero, and for this one, you have to die to a raid boss. Next up, we got Iron Man, which I think all of the endgame players watching should have. You simply just have to max out your hockey. Then we got Ultra Instinct, and for this one, your Instinct slash Observation has to just reach max level. So this could take some time to get. Then we got Mad Scientist, and for this one, all you have to do is just buy a normal raid chip. And then we got the Professor, and for this one, you have to buy a special microchip. Moving on, we got the Shadow, and for this one, you need to stay in a server for more than one hour. Then we got the Vampire, and you have to stay in the same server for four hours. Then we got Dracula, and for this one, you have to stay in a server for more than 12 hours. And this one, I don't think a lot of you should have. Then we got the Grandfather, which you have to trade in fragments for a race reroll. Pretty simple. Then we got Jack of All Trades, and for this one, you just have to trade fragments for a stat refund. Next, we got the Undefeated one, and for this one, you need to receive damage from a player and survive with less than 50 HP left. Moving on, we got Immortal Being, and for this one, you need to receive damage from a player and survive with only 1 HP left, and I don't think a lot of you watching should have this one. I mean, I don't even have it. Next up, we got the Mad King, and for this one, you need to use Castling in a chess match, which you can play with the chessboard in the Blocks Roots game. Next up, we got the Mastermind, and for this one, you simply have to defeat your opponent in a chess game. Moving on, we got the Dog, and all you have to do is simply talk to the Doghouse. Next up, we got Ship Destroyer, and for this one, all you gotta do is simply destroy a ship with a cannon. Now we got some level titles. We got the Explorer, which you have to reach level 800 for. Next, we got the Adventurer, which you have to reach level 1000 for. For level 1200, you get the Mercenary. For 1600, you get the Viking. And for level 2000, you get the Pioneer. And for level 2400, you get the Glorious. Now moving on to Mastery. You get the master for reaching max mastery on any sword or gun. And also for the same thing, you get another title called Unbreakable Will. Next up, we got Fist of Death. And for this one, you need to reach max mastery on a fighting style. When you reach max mastery on a sword, you get Godblade. And when you reach max mastery on a gun, you get King Sniper. And when you reach max mastery on your fruit, you get Beyond the Sea. Next up is the Broken Heart title. And you get this one by running out of time in a raid. And me personally, I have not done this. I just either finish the raid or just end up dying anyway. Next, we got the Conqueror, and this one most of you watching should have. You just have to simply complete a raid. Next up is Last Hope, and for this one, you have to be the last person standing and win a raid. We got the Supersonic, and for this one, you need to complete a raid in less than 5 minutes. Then we got the Flash, and for this one, you need to complete a raid in less than 3 minutes 30 seconds. Next, we got the Champion, and for this one, you need to complete Bartillo's mission. Then we got Tide Warrior, and for this one, you just simply have to die in water. Next, we got the Toxic, and for this one, you need to win a fruit from the factory event. Next up, we got Blessed One, and for this one, you just simply need to find a fruit that spawns on the map. Next up is Equal to Heavens, and for this one, you need to defeat a Blocks Fruit staff member. And this one is definitely one of the hardest ones on this list to do. Next, we got the Rich, and for this one, you need to gain a total of 5 million belly. Then we got the Unlimited Money title, and for this one, you need 20 million plus belly. And then we got the Richest in the World, and for this one, you need a whopping 50 million belly. Moving on, we got one called the Collector, and for this one, you need to obtain a sword from the Legendary Sword Dealer, or obtain an Aura Color. Next up is the Swordsman, and for this one, you just need to get a sword from the Legendary Sword Dealer. Then we got Beast Hunter, and this one is pretty simple, you just have to kill a Sea Beast. Then we got the Beast, and for this one, you need to kill 25 Sea Beasts. Then we got the Lost Soul, and for this one, you need to die to Factory Poison in the Factory Raid. Next up is Forbidden One, and for this one, you need to find the Fist of Darkness in a chest. Then we got the Troll, and for this one, you need to die with a fruit in your inventory. Then we got Hidden Power, and for this one, you just simply need to eat a physical fruit, and this one, a lot of you should not have a problem getting, because all you have to do is roll the Blast Fruit Gacha. Next up is Heavenly Devil, and for this one, you need to defeat the Dawn Swan boss once. Next up is the Cursed One, and for this one you need to defeat Darkbeard Ones. And if you defeat the Order Boss, you get Beyond Death. If you defeat the Cursed Captain, you get Knight's Edge. If you drop a Blocks Fruit, then you get Kind Hearted. And moving on, the next one is called the Kraken, and all you have to do for this one is drop a fruit to the sea. So if you guys really want this title, I recommend you drop something like the Kilo Fruit, because no one's gonna use that. Then we got Lavish Living, and for this one, you need to buy any fruit from the Blocks Fruit Dealer. Then we got Night Owl, and for this one, you need to buy a 1 million plus fruit from the Blocks Fruit Dealer. What I mean by this is buy a fruit that's worth more than 1 million belly, not literally buy 1 million fruits from him. Next up, we got Wicked Captain, and for this one, you need to obtain the Dark Coat. And if you unlock Dragon's Breath, you get 
a Dragonborn title. If you unlock Dead Step, you get Burning Leg. If you unlock Sharkman Karate, you get Sharkman. And if you unlock the Ren Goku Sword, then you get Samurai. If you die to a player below the level of 800, then you get the Silent title. If you die to a max level player, then you get the Executioner. But keep in mind, to get this one, you also have to be max level. Then we got the Stalker, and for this one, you simply just have to defeat a player that's the same level as you. Then we got Risk Taker, and for this one, you just have to buy a random fruit from the Blast Fruit Gacha. Then we got Luck of the Draw, and for this one, you need to obtain a fruit worth more than 1 million belly from the Blast Fruit Gacha. Next up, we got Unstoppable Force, and for this one, you need to defeat 5 players without dying in the same server. Then we got Raging Demon, and this one's pretty hard to get. You gotta defeat 20 players without dying in the exact same server. Next up, we got the Protagonist, and for this one, you need to defeat 2 players at the same time. Then we got Cold Blooded, and for this one, you need to defeat 10 players in the same server. Then we got Apex Predator, and for this one, you gotta defeat 25 players in the same server. Now, moving on to some unlock titles. You get the killer by unlocking Superhuman. You also get Human Weapon. Two titles in one. Pretty good deal if you ask me. Then if you unlock the true Triple Katana, you get Demon Eye and the Hurricane. And if you unlock any Aura color, you get the Enhancer. If you unlock the Snow White color, then you get True Heart. If you unlock the Pure Red color, then you get Bringer of Doom. If you unlock Winter Sky, then you get Realm Creator. If you unlock every purchasable Aura color, then you get Haka Ishin. If you unlock the Graveyard Secret, then you get Slayer of God. If you collect 100 Ectoplasm, then you get the Ghost. If you collect 250 Ectoplasm, then you get Ruler of the Night. And if you collect 1000 Ectoplasm, you get Lonely Reaper. Moving on, we got some pretty difficult titles to get. The most wanted title for this one, you get it by owning a crew that's currently in the top 100 of the leaderboard. And this is pretty hard to do if you ask me. And the next title, which is Pirate King. And for this one, you need to be in the top 10 of the leaderboard and be active. Now we got some titles that you can only get during events. You got the Sugar Rush one, which you need to collect 100 candies for. The Christmas Spirit, which you need to collect 250 for. You got Loco Verde, which you need to collect 1000 candies for. Next up is the Raid Boss title, and for this one, you need to get a fruit from the Pirate Raid event. Then we got the Real Deal, and for this one, you just have to defeat an elite enemy. Then we got Demon Mode, and for this one, you just have to unlock the Yama Sword. And similarly, if you unlock the Tushida Sword, you get Celestial Swordman. And next up is a title called Ration, and for this one, you need to unlock Electric Claw. Then we got Shadow Sovereign, and for this one, you need to defeat Rip Indra in his true form. Then we got the Chosen One, and for this one, you need to find the God's Chalice in a chest. Then we got Main Character, and for this one, you need to complete the Citizen's Mission. Then we got Final Hero, and for this one, you have to unlock Rainbow Savior. We got Skeleton, which you have to collect 250 bones to get. Then we got Undead Lord, and for this one, you need to collect 500 bones. And it doesn't end there, for the next one you need to collect 2,000 bones to unlock the title Death King. Then we got Shinigami, and for this one you need to defeat the Soul Reaper, just one time. Next up is the Devil's Luck, and for this one you need to obtain Hallow Essence and the God's Chalice from Praying. The next two titles are pretty hard to get. The first one is Doe Commander, and for this one you need to defeat the Cake Prince. And then we got Doe King, and this is a title that many of you definitely don't have. And all you have to do for this is defeat the Doe King. And something I should mention on a side note is that if you meet the requirements for any of these titles but you're still in the first C, you won't be able to get the title until you reach the second C. Because you can't really equip them in the first C, can you? Now we got some unobtainable titles that normal players cannot get. If you're a co-owner of Blocks Fruits, then you get two titles. The first one is Boss Blocks Fruits Official, and the second one is Owner. And if you're an admin in Blocks Fruits, you get El Rodolf Official. And if you're an Experimentric, then you get Festive Jester. And if you Rip Indra, you get Loco Verde. If you're Eroe, then you get Sable's Passado. If you're Drip Mama, then you get the Lost Original Bestia Suprema Loco Verde. And if you're Burgod, then you get Brazil God, and I don't know what the rest of this says. Someone please translate in the comments. And if you're Uzi London, you get the El Poppy title. And if you're Gossip, then you get the Lost Crazy Real Official. And if you're Rip Anderson, then you get the James Charles title. If you're Uzoth, then you get the... I don't know how to pronounce this, but here it is. And if you rip into it, you actually get a second title, and this one is called Rip underscore Family Leader. And if you're Mai, then you get the Lord Captain Mai official. Now let's talk a little bit about the title colors. The default color and the white color unlock automatically, so you can equip these at any time as long as you're in the second C. If you unlock 10 titles, then you get the Spanish pink color. If you get 20 titles, then you get Deep Peach. If you unlock 30 titles, then you get Blonde. You get the Kalamasi color if you unlock 40 titles. You get the Nyanza if you unlock 50 titles. If you unlock 60 titles, then you get Pistachio. If you unlock 70, then you get Green Tea. If you unlock 80, then you get Diamond. If you obtain 90 titles, then you get 
Powder Blue. You get Pale Lavender if you unlock 100 titles. You get Shampoo if you unlock 120 titles. And if you unlock 140, then you get Classic Rose. And the final hardest one to get is Aquamarine. And for this one, you need to unlock 160 titles. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about every single ability in Blox Fruits, as well as some secret abilities that you might have not known existed. So starting off, these are some abilities you should already be familiar with. I'm talking about the abilities from the Ability Teacher. The Ability Teacher is an NPC found inside the cave at the Frozen Village and near the Magma Village quest giver. He allows you to purchase three different abilities, and each ability costs a different amount of money depending on how good they are. So the first ability, Air Jump. Basically lets you double jump a total of 10 times, and this varies depending on what race you have, but for most people it should be 10 jumps. And this one costs a total of 10,000 belly to buy. The second one is Hockey, and this basically just creates a black aura around the character. It changes the amount of damage you dish out and the damage you take. And this ability costs a total of 25,000 belly. The first stage of the aura covers half of your arms, and the second stage covers the full arms. Stage 3 covers the torso and full arms. Stage 4 also covers the head. Stage 5 covers the full arms, torso, head, and half of your leg. And the final stage, stage 6, it covers your whole body. And the XP needed for each of these stages is completely different. But if you want to max out this ability, you need a total of 60,000 XP with your hockey. And you can also purchase different colors for this from the color specialist. If you're a rich person with Robux, then you can just directly buy it from the place underneath the cafe. If you want to buy it with normal money, then you have to wait for the NPC to spawn. Next ability is called Flash. Step. It basically just lets your character zip from one place to another. You just have to place your cursor in a certain place and then you click the key R and it just teleports you there directly. And if you have the human V2, the cooldown for this reduces to 10 seconds instead of the normal 15 seconds. And you can also teleport twice as far, making it extremely overpowered if you're a human. And this ability costs a total of 100,000 belly. But in my opinion, the best ability you could buy from here is hockey. And the reason for that is that this is something you absolutely need to complete the game. Meanwhile, flash step and sky jump aren't 100% necessary. But I still recommend you guys buy all of these. These are the basic abilities that everybody playing the game should definitely have equipped it. Next up, we also got a pretty popular ability, and this one is Observation. Observation is an ability that lets you dodge incoming attacks from enemies, and it also lets you see enemies through walls and other solid surfaces. And the distance you can see them from depends on what its level is. The way you get this is by talking to the Instinct Teacher, who's found at the top of the temple on Upper Sky Islands. And to learn this ability, you need to be at least level 300 or higher, and you have to kill the Saber Expert. It costs a total of 750,000 belly, so make sure you have that cash ready. When you buy it, you get a total of 2 dashes, and this is the level 1. And 2,121 XP for level 6, which gives you 7 dodges with increased visual range, making you see a lot more than you normally can. And then once you get 2,824 XP, you reach level 7, which is the max level, and you get a total of 8 dodges. You can actually increase the amount of dodges you get by changing your race, or if you equip the scarf you get after killing the Doe King. This one literally increases your observations range by 10 times, making it a really OP accessory for observation users. Moving on, we actually got Observation V2. It's something that was added in Update 15 and you have to be in the third seat to unlock it. And the way you do it is by completing the long quest with many requirements from the Hungry Man. And you have to completely max out your observation ability first, which requires you 5,000 XP on it. And it lets you see the player's level, the fighting style they're using, the sword they have, the fruit they have equipped it, and what gun they're using. And you can see all of this at the same time. Observation V2 actually recharges your dodges faster than V1, literally 10 seconds faster. And it also has a way bigger range than the V1, letting you see people that are really far away. And this also gives you a less blurred vision so you can actually see the people you're fighting much better. And in my opinion, Observation V2 is going to help you a lot more in PvP because it's much better than the V1. Okay, so everybody knows that there are a few different races in Blocks Fruits, and we're going to be talking about some of the abilities you get from them. So for the human race V3, you get an ability that's called Last Resort. It lasts for a total of 6.5 seconds and has a 20 second cooldown. Good thing about this ability is that it increases the damage output by a huge amount, and it's really good for PvP, especially when you're losing in a fight. A bad thing about this ability is that it cannot be used as an initial damage boost, but other than that, I think there's a pretty decent ability if you use it in the right circumstances. Okay, moving on to the Rabbit Race. When you unlock the V3 for this race, you get an ability that's called Agility, and it does exactly what it sounds like. It boosts the player's movement speed to 4 times their normal movement speed, and it also boosts your dash length slightly, so when you click Q to dash, you go a little bit further. This one also lasts for a total of 6.5 seconds, but it has a 30 second cooldown. In my opinion, I think the human's ability is still a little bit better for PvP compared to this one, and the reason for that is you just move around a lot faster, and if your opponent has really good aim, it shouldn't be a problem for them to hit you. The thing 
something about this ability is that it literally makes you faster than the light fruit's shining light ability. It's really good for traveling, chasing others, and pretty decent for PvP. But the bad thing is that it doesn't buff anything besides speed, and the duration is also pretty short. Moving on to the Angel Rays, the V3 ability for this one is called Heavenly Blood, and that's a pretty cool name. So basically what it does is it buffs the player's defense by 15%, also heals 20% of their maximum health. It gives you a 10% maximum energy increase and 10% natural regeneration increase. This one also lasts for 6.5 seconds and it has a cooldown of 20 seconds. Good thing about this ability is you can be made into a literal tank. And if you combine this with the Phoenix Fruits healing ability, it's literally gonna make you unstoppable. This can be really good for Sky camping if you want to regen a bit of your health in pvp pretty bad thing about this ability is that the only thing this is useful for is pvp and you can't really use it for anything else because you're not going to be taking that much damage when fighting npcs but it depends on how good you are at the game so good luck using this ability moving on we got the shark race and the special ability for this one is called water body and it boosts the player's defense to any incoming attacks by 80 percent which means you only take 20 percent of the damage it lasts for a total of 6.5 seconds but it has a 30 second cooldown a little bit longer than the other ones. A bad thing about this ability is that it does not reduce damage from non-player sources, stuff like lava and water. It's going to be pretty rare to encounter those, so you should be fine. And obviously this ability can be countered if your opponent literally does an inhumane amount of damage to you, example if you're like a level 1000 player and you're fighting against someone that's max level. But if you played the game right, that shouldn't be happening a lot. Okay, so next up we got the ghoul race, and the special ability for this one is called heightened senses. And basically what this ability does is it reduces the player's cast cooldown by 40% and their regeneration speed, damage, and defense by 15%. It lasts a total of 8 seconds, which is longer than all the other abilities mentioned so far. But it does have a 30 second cooldown. If some of you are wondering what cast cooldown reduction means, it basically reduces the amount of time it takes to use an ability again. So let's take Control's V move for example. You have to wait a total of 20 seconds to use it again. But if you have heightened senses activated, then it only takes 8 seconds to use it it again which means when you're in pvp you can basically just spam all the abilities and it's also a pretty good counter to the rabbits abilities because you can't really outrun millions of abilities but a bad thing about this like another ability mentioned before is its long cooldown but in my opinion for the buffs it gives you it's definitely worth it okay so moving on to the cyborg race the special ability for this one is called energy core it boosts the player's defense stat by a total of 30 percent and it also creates an area of damage lightning effect around the players who does a bunch of damage to people that walk into its range. Damage for this ability starts at 0 damage and it scales up by 0.65 every 10 levels. Which means if you're level 2000 then you should do 130 damage per tick. A really overpowered thing about this ability is that it's really good for breaking observation which means players that you're fighting against basically can't use any dodges on you. And since it has a really long cooldown, if you're destroying someone in a fight they can kind of just run away from you after this ends. And it doesn't provide any extra buffs outside the damage and defense, but overall still a pretty solid ability. Ability. Next up, we got a secret ability that not many of you might have known existed. Being able to summon CBs. And some of you might be wondering, how is it possible to do this? If you reach a total of 10 million bounty or honor in Blast Fruits, you get this ability. And basically what it does is it lets you summon up to a total of 3 sea beasts all at once. But keep in mind, it only works in water that's in the 2nd or 3rd sea. And the amount of health and damage the sea beast does completely depends on the level of the player. If the player is max level, then the sea beast should have a total of 34,500 health. And the sea beast spawned in by players do not give any extra drops like normal sea beasts would. Because that would be kind of OP to farm. Them. And the sea beast will literally demolish any NPC or player that's next to them. Overall, a really overpowered ability. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a guide on every single race in Blocks Fruits and also telling you about some secrets that you might have not known about them. So starting off, there are four main races in this game and those are Human, Shark, Angel, and Rabbit. And these are the four races that anybody can spawn in as. Although you probably are going to spawn in as Human because you have a 50% chance of that happening. There are also two other races and this is the Cyborg and Ghoul race. You cannot spawn in or change into these races. You need to get them in doing quests or buying them. Any normal player cannot change their quest in the first seat unless you spend a bunch of robux and buy it from the product shop this costs 90 robux so it's probably better to buy it with fragments and the place you buy with fragments from is in the second seat you walk over to troll who's located in the cafe and then if you give him 3,000 fragments you can just roll to a different random race 
Now we got the human race, and this is the most popular race in the game, and it's the one that almost every player uses currently. The thing about the human race is it does not have any default buffs. You literally get nothing in its first form. And the way you upgrade it to its second form is by doing the alchemist quest. And the place the alchemist is located is in the green zone in the second sea. And once you talk to him, he's going to give you a quest to find three different types of flowers. A red flower, a blue flower, and a yellow flower. And once you've done that, you need to pay him 500,000 belly, and he'll upgrade your race to v2 and the way you get your human race to v3 is by finding this npc located in this secret place underneath the diamond boss and keep in mind the v3 quest is different for every single race and this is the one that you have to do if you're a human this quest will tell you to kill three different bosses in the second sea the diamond boss jeremy and fatija and these bosses are all fairly easy to kill if you have the buddha fruit so i recommend you guys use this fruit for this quest and remember do not server hop when you do this quest because if you leave the game in the middle of this quest when you join back it does not save your progress so you just have to sit in the map and wait for the bosses to respawn or you could spend 50 robux to respawn every boss in the game and for the v4 of the human race you need to do the temple of time puzzle and then do the trial of strength and the requirements this are mirror fractals which you get from killing the doe king and obviously you need your race to be v3 and you have to have killed rip indra the literal final boss of the game and then you have to wait for the mirage island to spawn which is a really rare sea event and you need two other friends with two different races a really good thing about the human race is that when you upgrade it to v3 you get an ability called last resort when you use this ability if your health is less than 50 percent it starts immensely increasing your damage output but something that's not so good about the human race is that the last resort ability can be really risky in pvp because you need to be on low health to use its full potential the duration for this is also pretty short so it might not be such a great ability to use but overall, the human race, in my opinion, is probably one of the best races in this game. And if you spawn in as a human, you definitely want to stay as one. Now we have the shark race. And on joining the game, every player has a 12.5% chance to be granted this race. Making it pretty rare to get. Way rarer than the human one. So the V1 ability, the damage you take from water reduces immensely if you have a devil fruit equipped in. And it also makes you swim a bit faster. And once you upgrade this race to V2, doing the same quest as the human one because the V2 quest for every race in the game is the same. So the abilities that you get from V2 is it increases your player speed. And it completely removes the damage that you take from water, even if you have a blocks fruit equipped in. So you could literally have the most overpowered fruit, and if somebody was to knock you into the water, you literally wouldn't drown, which is really overpowered. And did I also mention that this race gives you a little fin on your back, which kind of looks a bit cute. And to upgrade your shark race into v3, you talk to the same NPC as for the human quest, and all you have to do is kill a sea beast. It cannot be a sea beast that is summoned by other players or admins, it has to be one that spawns naturally. The easiest way to do this is just to drive your boat out into the middle of nowhere and just simply wait for a sea beast to spawn. And then once it spawns in, you just have to use every ability, preferably a devil fruit, and I definitely recommend death step for this because it's the easiest to farm sea beasts with. And once you've done that, you should get the v3 of your shark race and you get a new ability called water body this decreases the damage you take by 80 percent from npcs and other players but the thing about it is that it only lasts for 6.5 seconds and has a 30 second cooldown and once you upgrade this race to v4 you get ancient powers when you transform you receive max stats literally every stat you have in your inventory is fully maxed your damage speed and your heal increase by 10 percent and you also gain a water shield called leviathan's armor which increases by doing damage so it's kind of like the opposite of the human if you're low on health all you have to do is dish out damage and you get your health back and you also get an ability called whirlpool it gives your enemies a water debuff and it slows down their speed and did i also mention that the transformation for all race v4s look really crazy just keep watching to find out what the others look like now we have the angel race and this race also has a 12.5 percent chance of getting this race when you first join the game when you have the version one of the angel race the jump height that you have increases by a slight amount and you also immediately unlock the air jump ability even if you did buy it from the abilities teacher which is kind of overpowered for new players and you also get a small pair of wings on your back 
And once you upgrade your race to V2, your air jump ability goes slightly higher than every other race. And the energy requirement for air jumping is reduced by 20%, which lets you save a lot of energy, especially if you're newer to the game and you don't have as many stats on your energy. And you also gain an additional air jump, which is pretty cool. But there are no visual changes for this stage. And the way you upgrade this race to V3 is by getting the arrows quest, and then you need to kill a player with the same race as you. You literally have to kill another angel player. And once you've done that, the abilities you get are one step higher. You unlock an ability called Heavenly Blood, and when this is activated, it increases your defense by 15%, and it also heals 20% of your maximum health, making it a pretty good ability for healing. And it also regenerates a bit of your energy. And once you awaken this race by upgrading it to V4, you receive an ability called King's Rule, which adds an aura around the user with multiple effects. Slowness, damage, energy drain, screen, and distortion. And these are kind of OP. I can't imagine fighting against someone with the angel race. You also acquire one called Prince of the Sky. This allows the user to glide in the air by holding the dash button, and then free flight by holding the jump button, which is really cool. It's kind of like Minecraft creative mode. And your wings also grow much bigger and you start glowing in this really cool golden color. And now we have the rabbit race, previously known as the mink race, but it was changed because of copyright. Instantly, it increases your speed by 1.5x, literally making you run so much faster than every other player around you. Once you upgrade it to V2, it increases your movement speed to double. You literally run twice as fast as a normal player. And it also decreases the amount of energy it takes to use your dash from 25 to 15, making it really spammable and overpowered. To upgrade it to V3, you talk to the same NPC as before, and for this quest, you have to collect 30 chests. And once this is upgraded to V3, you earn an ability called Agility. And when you activate this ability, it makes you four times faster, literally. And it also increases your dash length slightly, on top of the base improvement. And once you awaken your race by reaching V4, you get the base ability that all other awakenings have. And then you get an ability called Whirlwind. It literally spawns in a tornado. Can you imagine that? Every time you dash, you spawn in a tornado. And what the tornadoes do is that they literally trap enemies for a solid second. Another one is called Lightning cloak and what this does is it increases your dashes to be even longer and if you upgrade this ability you can literally super dash just imagine how far that takes you overall in my opinion this is a really good race especially for the speed aspect i'm pretty sure this is the fastest race in the whole game so if your pvp style revolves around speed this is definitely the race you want to keep your eye on and now this is the first race that you cannot naturally get by spawning into the game it's the cyborg race and the way you get the cyborg race is by completing the cyborg puzzle quest. First, you have to get the fist of darkness. Then you have to start an order raid and insert the fist of darkness into the machine. Then you have to buy the microchip. And once you're done with this quest, you can buy the race for 2,500 fragments. In its first version, it gives you absolutely no buffs, but you do have a physical change. You basically get a metallic mask on your head, which looks pretty sick in my opinion. And once you upgrade this race to V2, you get a 10 percent defense against all melee sword and gun attacks 15 percent of the damage you receive will just turn into energy which is kind of machine like i guess that's why it's called cyborg Stop the cap <laughs> And the way you upgrade Cyborg to V3 is also really easy, even easier than the Rabbit's Quest. All you have to do is give the NPC any physical blocks for it. You could literally give him a kilo food and he would accept it. And once you've upgraded this to V3, you gain an ability called Energy Core. And when this is activated, it boosts the player's defense by 30%. And you also get a lightning effect around your body, and it does more damage to players depending on what your level is. And a pretty cool about this lightning ability is that it breaks observation, which is really good for PvP. And once this ability is awakened by upgrading to V4, you get an ability called Energy Control. It lets the user super jump, I mean, like, you can jump really high with this. You also get an ability called Aftershock. Every attack you dish out, they basically don't let your enemy use the observation. And this is really critical in PvP because observation is the reason between winning and losing PvP fights. Overall, this race is not as good as the other ones, but it's definitely something you want to keep your eye on. And now we got another one of the special races. This is the Ghoul Race. And to obtain the Ghoul Race, you need to be at least level 1000 and you need 100 ectoplasm, which is dropped by NPCs at the Cursed Ship. And you also need a Hellfire Torch, which only has a 1-2% to chance of being dropped by the Cursed Captain, who only spawns every night, so the Hellfire Torch is going to be really 
really difficult to get. And once you have all the requirements, you can talk to Estremic, who can be found at the kitchen on the cursed ship, and change your race into a ghoul. The V1 of the ghoul race gives you a 30% extra run speed in the night, and you also get these really cool pair of black horns on your head. And once you upgrade this to V2, every time you hit another player with a fighting style, it heals 25% of the damage you do to the other player, which is literally one fourth, and that's kind of overpowered. And you also heal 5% of your health at the same time. And the way you upgrade your ghoul race to V3 is by talking to the exact same NPC as before, but this time you have to kill five different players. And this is probably one of the harder quests, so make sure you have the fighting styles ready to take on those five players. And once you upgrade to v3 you unlock an ability called heightened senses and while this is activated it lets you use skills that are still on a 40 percent cooldown and that's almost half which is really op and it also buffs your overall damage by 10 percent your speed by 10 percent and your defense by 15 percent and this ability lasts for eight seconds literally two seconds longer than all of the abilities for the other races once you upgrade this race to v4 and awaken it you gain an ability called blood siphon and this gives all of your attacks life leech, which is kind of OP. Keep in mind that this is weaker on NPCs. And the second ability that you get is Domain Expansion. And what this does, it creates a huge dark field around your player, which reduces the health and regeneration and applies blindness to everybody standing inside it. And remember all the night passive abilities that your race has, you can now use them during the day. And in the upgraded version, crows will attack nearby enemies, increasing your field of range. And a really cool visual change is that you get this glowing red crown added to your head, which makes your player look so much better. And this transformation is by far one of my favorites. Your character gains wings similar to the angel race, and you glow with this really cool black and white aura. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to farm fruits 10 times faster, as well as some secret methods that you might have not known. So first up, we got an NPC that a lot of you definitely did not know about, the advanced fruit dealer. And he looks a little bit different to the normal boss fruit dealer, but as you can tell by the name, he's a way better version of it. The advanced fruit dealer is an NPC that spawns on the Mirage Island. The Mirage Island is one out of four random sea events that can occur. And you just have to be driving with a boat in the middle of nowhere. And before the recent update, you actually had to wait till a full moon for the Mirage Island to spawn, but now it just spawns on any regular day, making your chances of getting this boss fruit dealer much easier. And he spawns somewhere random on the island, so you have to go look for him. But if you do find him, just know that you're in luck. The advanced fruit dealer has a minimum of 7 fruits that can be in stock compared to the measly 3 fruits for the normal dealer. And there's also a higher chance of legendary fruits being in stock. And he has a restock time of 2 hours compared to the 4 hours of the normal dealer. But keep in mind, the Mirage Island spawns in and only stays for a really short amount of time, so you have to find him, buy the stuff you want, and leave as soon as possible. Okay, so this is a method that's guaranteed to get you a Bloxfruit, fruit, and it's at the castle on the sea. And some of you might be wondering, what is this location? It's actually the final location of the game, and it's obviously located on the third sea. And a pretty cool thing is that you can use portals to get there. Every 20 minutes on the island, there will appear a message on the top of your screen and in the chat saying pirates have been spotted. And around 30 seconds later, a ton of pirates from the second sea will start spawning. And there also is a kind of a final boss to this raid, which is more powerful than all the other NPCs. And whoever kills the final NPC gets a random fruit. Overall, this is not that good of a method for grinding fruit since the type of fruit you get is completely random. So you don't know if you're going to get a kilo fruit or a dough fruit. But nevertheless, it's still a way to grind fruits. Okay, so next up we got a really interesting way, and it's by trading fruits. And you might be wondering, how can you actually get fruits if you always trade for equal value? Well, the trick to that is that you don't need to always be trading for equal value. Some people are willing to buy fruits even if they're worse than the fruits you're offering. And the best way to find people that offer these types of fruit is to use Discord servers. And the reason for that is that you can just go into any trading channel and just type in the exact trade that you want to do. For example, Light for Ice. And then other people will DMing you, depending on whether they think it's a good trade or not. And trading is pretty simple, I think you all know how it works. You can trade on different places in the map, including the cafe and mansion. And if you are trying to trade in a random box fruit server, these are definitely the places you want to go to to look for people to trade with. Overall, this is a really good way because you can end up trading up to really good fruits. So I definitely recommend this one. Next up, we got another raid, and this one's called a Factory Raid. It's located at the Kingdom of Rose on the Second Sea. This raid happens every 1 hour and 30 minutes. And the way this raid works is that there's a core that spawns inside of the factory that has a total of 200,000 health. To finish the raid, you have to reduce the core's health to zero by dealing damage to it, but keep in mind you have to do this in at least 5 minutes. 
and whoever does the most amount of damage to the core will get a completely random blocks fruit. A pretty cool tip to actually win in this raid is to kill the other people that are trying to deal damage to the core. I mean, they're helping you deal damage, but they also might get the most. And also, another pretty obvious thing is to use abilities, fruits, and combat styles that deal the most amount of damage. Fruits like the Magma V2 and Venom are really overpowered for this. As well as Awakened Doe, but that one's pretty hard to get. And also, it's better to grind this raid on private servers because there won't be other players trying to steal the damage from you. Overall, this is a pretty cool way to grind fruits, but definitely not the best. Next up, we got ship raids, and this is one out of the four sea events that can happen in blocks fruits. And obviously, they happen when you're in water driving a boat. This ship raid spawns a barrage ship and two other basic boats that will constantly follow you and shoot a bunch of cannonballs at your ship. The raid ends once the boat that you were originally driving on gets destroyed, so you want to protect your boat at all costs. And if you completely delete all the ships off the map, you should get a total of 50 fragments for every basic ship, 100 fragments for the barrage, and a 10 to 20% chance of spawning a random blocks fruit. This is definitely not the best grinding method out there. As you can see, you can only get it with a 10 to 20% chance. So you're gonna have to do an average of at least more than five raids if you want a chance to get at least one fruit. Then again, it could just end up being the chop fruit. Next up, we got something that's really basic, and this is definitely something that you've all done before. It's just simply picking up fruits. Fruits and blocks fruits spawn every hour on random islands across the map. And all you have to do is simply walk over to them and pick it up. And this cooldown is actually reduced on weekends because the blocks fruits devs know that more people play on Saturdays and Sundays. So you can farm fruits a little bit faster. But a downside to this farming method is that if you're farming in a private server, then the fruits don't spawn as often. And this is to prevent exploiters and hackers from farming every fruit. But you actually don't know where the fruit spawns, which brings me to my next method. The blocks fruit notifier is going to make your fruit grinding life 10 times easier. Easier. It shows you exactly how far away you are from a fruit. This game pass cost a total of 2,700 Robux, and it was on sale for the Easter event, making it cost only 1,999. But the fruit notifier only works if the player is already in the game when the fruit spawns. So if you join a game and the fruit has already spawned, even though it's still on the floor, it won't show the distance. And once the fruit notifier is activated, it cannot be turned off until you either pick up the fruit or somebody else does. So overall, this is a really decent game pass if you just want to grind yeah, fruits why? pretty fast. Next up, we got an NPC that you should all be familiar with. I'm talking about the Blocks Fruit Dealer. And the Blocks Fruit Dealer is an NPC where you can either buy fruits with money or Robux, depending on how rich you are. It can have a minimum of three fruits in stock with the Kilo and Spin Fruit always being there. A player can buy any fruit that's on stock an unlimited number of times, although it replaces the fruit that you already have equipped it. Keep in mind, you only get the abilities of the fruit and not a physical version of it. So it's not like you can buy it and drop it to somebody else. Fruits can always be bought with Robux, even if they're not in stock, making the lives of people with Robux 10 times easier. And if you buy a fruit with Robux, you get to permanently keep it and you can switch back to whenever you want. The Blocks Fruit Dealer changes the fruits at 1am, 5am, 9am, 1pm, 5pm, 9pm, and these are all pacific time the blocks fruit dealers is on the pirate starter island the marine starter island middletown dressrosa docks the cafe the mansion and port town so now you know how to find the dealer and what his reset times are on to the next one next up we got another npc that you should all be familiar with the blocks fruit gotcha He's an NPC that lets you roll a random physical fruit, and the amount of money it costs to roll the fruit completely depends on the level of the player. So basically, if you have a higher level, then you have to pay more to roll the fruit. The Blocks Fruit Gotcha was added in Update 14, and in Update 17 Part 3, a minimum level of 50 was added to the NPC to prevent people from making a bunch of alt accounts to just farm a bunch of fruits. The places he's located is in the first sea at the jungle, the second sea at the cafe, and at the third sea in the mansion on the floating turtle. If you're a max level player, then you have to to pay a total of 392,350 belly to roll a fruit. But if you're level 50, then all you have to pay is 32,000 belly. Overall, this is one of the best ways to grind fruits in the game. Just make sure you don't roll them if you already have the fruit you want, because then you just end up with a kind of useless fruit. What? Okay, so next up, we got one of the worst ways to farm fruits and blocks fruits, the doghouse. And a lot of you might be wondering, what is the doghouse and how do you farm fruits with it? It can be found underneath where the diamond boss spawns on the second sea at the Kingdom of Rose. And you just have to walk through this secret wall over here. And then you have to go talk to the literal doghouse. And he'll tell you, want to buy a physical kilo fruit for 97 Robux? I'm just going to tell you guys right now, it's probably the worst way to get a fruit in the whole of blocks fruit. I mean, I don't know anybody on this planet that would pay 97 Robux for a kilo fruit. I mean, unless you're super rich, I guess. But an upside to this is that it can be used to complete the Cyborg V3 quest, and you can also trade it in for a microchip. But you can literally just use the gacha, and it can be bought for a total of 5,000 belly. So overall, this is a really bad option. 
and now we got something that's looked down by almost the whole blocks fruits community i'm talking about begging you basically just walk around the server and you just beg people for fruits and if you get really lucky a rich player might just drop you the fruit you need and something i should mention is that if you want to be begging then just make sure you're doing it in the first seat a lot of high level players like to hang out there and if they're nice enough they'll just drop you a really good fruit and sometimes when good players roll the blocks fruit gotcha and they get a pretty decent fruit but it's a fruit that they already have they might just drop it to you because if they already have one stored then there's not much they can do with that fruit i mean it's better to give the fruit to someone than just completely waste it but overall the other tips on this list are definitely a lot better than this one so if you're begging just make sure you're doing it correctly okay this drop fruit glitch lets you fly around the map at high speeds and this rubber glitch made your arms 10 times longer these are 16 of the craziest glitches in Blocks Fruits history. Okay, so starting off, we have one of the most viral glitches in Blocks Fruits history. And if you're an old player, you should definitely remember this one. No. It's the Chop Fruit glitch. And all you had to do to activate this glitch was turn on your shift lock with the Chop Fruit activated. And then all you would have to do is use your C move and then switch to your sword as quickly as possible. Now just hold the A and D button while holding your spacebar and you should literally be able to fly across the map like you're using fly hacks. This glitch was amazing. You can literally go from island to island in a matter of seconds. And all you have to do is buy the simple Chop Fruit to do this. And if you use your sky jump ability, you could literally go to new heights. But overall, I'm really happy that the Blocks Fruits devs patched this glitch because it was just way too overpowered of a glitch and probably the most op glitch on this whole list okay so moving on we got another pretty um interesting glitch and i think this one just kind of speaks for itself all right let's just go to the next one okay so moving on we got a glitch with a buddha fruit in the early days of the game it had a ton of glitches that we can look at so the first glitch is this hockey glitch so basically if you turn on your hockey at the right time as you untransform from your buddha then you would actually keep the massive hockey that you had which means your small avatar like your small character would be engulfed in a huge hockey of your huge buddha making it look pretty funny if you ask me and it looks even funnier when you're walking around it doesn't have that much practical use unless you want to try and pretend being a rock in the middle of nowhere then maybe people won't see you and you can kind of sneak attack them Okay, so moving on, everybody knows about the X move from the rubber fruit, the gum bazooka. In the olden days of block fruits, if you use this ability and then you quickly talk to an NPC, then your arms will stay stuck forever behind your back, leading you to have some pretty goofy looking hands. And this glitch even stayed when you switched away from the rubber fruit, so you could literally switch to something like the chop fruit, do the flying glitch, and combine both of the glitches, making you a flying person with massive hands, and this looks super funny. But obviously, this is patched now, and can't really do this glitch anymore. If you use this rubber ability, if you combine it with the electric fighting style, then you get something like this, which looks really funny. And you can also combine it with things like the ice fruit, letting you zip across the map in massive speed looking really goofy at the same time. Some of these old glitches were just really OP, but you had to be careful when you did this glitch because sometimes you'd actually glitch underneath the water and you would end up dying if you went for too long. Okay, so moving on, we got a glitch that's still in the game and hasn't been patched to this day. And I'm talking about the flash step glitch that lets you glitch through walls. Turn your camera to an angle where you can see behind the wall and then you just click your flash step key. And boom, you just teleport it outside the wall. First thing you can use it for is to just simply get through buildings faster. And the second one is to find really cool and glitch locations underneath the map. But this one doesn't have that much practical use. It's more so just finding cool things. But overall, still a really powerful glitch, and I'm not sure how it's not been patched yet. The next glitch on this list was discovered by a YouTuber named Identity Top Hat, and it's a pretty funny glitch with the Phoenix Fruit. One day, Identity Top Hat was just chilling in a normal PvP fight, and then he used one of the abilities for his Phoenix Fruit, and instead of doing damage to the player, it just glitched him underneath the map. But I'm not sure if there's any way to actually properly replicate this. I think it was more so chance, but I just recommend you guys out there, be careful while using the Phoenix Fruit, because you might accidentally glitch underneath the map and then wait there till your energy runs out and your flying ability deactivates and then you just end up dying next up we got a glitch that literally gives you infinite speed and for this one you actually need the permanent spirit fruit and any other fruit that's permanent when you have the spirit fruit equipped it is place all your spirits in the blue section and then what you have to do is swap to another permanent fruit and you will keep the speed buff permanently and then what you can actually do is switch back to the spirit fruit and you can keep repeating this process by putting all your spirits in the blue zone again and then you can switch back to another permanent fruit and the speed buff actually stacks and with this you can basically get infinite speed it just completely depends on how long you're willing to spend on it really overpowered glitch if you ask me 
Next up on the list, we got a pretty funny glitch that all of you watching can do right now. All you have to do is head over to the cafe in the second seat, and then you have to basically just sit on a chair, and then this pretty funny glitch happens where it just kind of bounces you off and sends you flying away. I'm not sure why this glitch still exists, but maybe the chair just doesn't like you. <laughs> because it doesn't work on all chairs. Just a pretty funny glitch overall, and it doesn't have that much practical use. Okay, so next up, we got another Buddha glitch, and this one is really funny. It literally makes your head massive. So all you have to do is go talk to the Awakenings expert who's located on the cafe on the second seat and the mansion on the third seat. And before I start this, I'm not sure if this glitch has been patched already, but the glitch was possible one year ago. So basically how it works is you just have to talk to the NPC and all you have to do is unawaken your Buddha fruit. And once you do that, you have to use the shift ability which transforms you into the normal Buddha form. You need to talk to the NPC again and then awaken your Buddha fruit. And if you do that and use your transformation again, it should only transform your head. I'm not sure why this glitch exists, and I'm not sure if it still works, but it's really funny because it makes your head way bigger than your body, and it just looks really goofy. Okay, so moving on to the next trick, you will not believe this. It's another Buddha glitch. Damn! And this one is kind of like the opposite from the previous one. It's a small Buddha glitch. But basically what happens is when you just use the transform ability on your Buddha fruit, it actually transforms everything but your body. You even get the long range attack along with the weird magical circle that appears around your character. But your character is still super small like a regular size player, but it even changes color to match the Buddha. And I don't think there's really a way to force this glitch. It just kind of happens randomly, but I think hyping has to do something with it. Okay, so next up on this list, we got a pretty funny glitch that has to do with boats and the way you do this glitch is by having the dough fruit equipped it. and once you have it just make sure you have this second ability awakened and then all you have to do is stand next to the driver's seat of the boat and then hold down the ability key and just walk straight into the driver's seat and if you do this correctly the boat should just start shaking rapidly and it just looks really funny and i think if you do this enough times it should be able to glitch underneath the map but i'm not 100 percent sure on that one overall just a pretty funny glitch and i recommend you all to try it Okay, so next up, we got another random and pretty interesting glitch that happened around one year ago in Blocks Fruits. Just a pretty weird glitch that basically just doesn't let you jump. It basically makes your spacebar key really useless, and you kind of just do flips in the same spot. A really goofy glitch, if you ask me. Let's just go to the next one. Okay, so next up, we got a portal fruit glitch that literally takes you out of the world. Really weird glitch, so basically you have to use the final ability of the portal fruit, the dimensional rift, and then if you use the spiky trident and use the dough hurricane ability, it might just teleport you into literally nowhere there's no islands in view you just see nothing you're just constantly falling till you reach nowhere really weird glitch and i think it happened to the user because they were on high ping so you guys shouldn't be worried about it okay so next up we got a glitch that i'm pretty sure only happens to mobile players out there when he used the roller donut ability from the dough food it what just got that? stuck and then he just teleported into the middle of the ocean and the glitch happened one more time when he used a different ability not sure why this glitch happened or what the cause of it is and i'm actually surprised that this glitch isn't that well known because i'm pretty sure it happens to mobile players a ton of times okay so next up we got a literal flying glitch well not so much as a flying glitch kind of just having like really long invisible legs which literally lets you kind of just walk on mid-air really weird glitch and this player found it just using the dough donut and just teleported them to the top of nowhere and they can even ride the donut around the place and use other abilities on the npcs below which means the npcs literally can't hit them but they can hit them really overpowered then again, this glitch is really random, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you watching cannot replicate this. Most of these glitches are just due to high ping, or else they should be really hard to encounter. Okay, so this next glitch is one that's also really, really random, and it's just pretty weird. One day, a player named Kind Alpha plays, which is walking around, and he found a block fruit that spawned it, but there was actually another player standing on the block fruit without picking it up. And when he picked up the fruit, the player just disappeared along with the fruit. Just a really weird glitch. And if you encounter this, not sure what it means. Figure it out for yourselves. <laughs> Did you know that you can walk on water without the help of any races or fruits? And this is how you change the color of your dragon. These are 16 of the craziest blocks fruits tricks that you need to abuse. Did you know that there's actually a way to walk on water in blocks fruits without using the awakened magma or the ice fruit? You serious? And this trick is something that anybody that's in the third sea can do right now. All you have to do is head to the island with the final quest giver. And behind the island in this specific spot, there's actually a place you can walk on water without taking any damage, even if you have a double fruit equipped in. But keep in mind that it's only in this small area, and if you venture too far off, then you might end up falling into the real water. So make sure you stay in the small area. 
Okay, so this next trick is for you dragon fruit users out there, and it's actually a way to change the color of your dragon. Most of you playing the game only know about the green dragon color, but there's actually a way to change that to a bunch of different options. And the way you do this is obviously you gotta have the dragon fruit equipped, it, and then you actually have to head over to Sky Islands in the first seat. You should see there's a bunch of rings with different colors, and to change your color, you simply have to fly into one of them, and then unequip your transformation and transform again. And then you should see the full color of your dragon should be completely completely changed. But I definitely think that the green color looks way more iconic and way more like a dragon. Because when was the last time you saw a yellow dragon? But I guess the blue color could be pretty cool as well. Okay, so this trick is very useful and it's gonna help you get a lot of money really fast. And I'm talking about server hopping method by claiming chests. And a really good location to do this is at the top of the haunted ship in the third sea. If you go up there, you notice that there's a total of three different diamond chests. And everybody knows diamond chests are one of the best chests in Blast Fruits. Second to the fragment chest. Simply collect every single chest and just repeat this method over and over, depending on how much money you want to get from it. In my opinion, server hopping chests is one of the fastest and simplest ways to grind money in blocks fruits and it's something you can do no matter what level you are and there's a lot of good locations to server hop chests even in the first seat overall a pretty simple method but there are definitely some other cooler ones out there Okay, so everybody knows that you get a lot of bounty from killing bosses in Blocks Fruits. But did you know that there's actually a location on the map which spawns two different bosses? And I'm talking about Upper Skylands. But this is something that I've mentioned in a previous video. There's also another location in the first sea that actually has three different bosses in the same place. The prison. And most of you watching should already know about this location, but some of you might have forgotten that it's a really good way to grind some bounty. And if you server hop servers that don't have a lot of players, then the bosses will probably be there most of the time. So you should have no problem getting your bounty up. But keep in mind, you cannot get bounty from bosses after you reach 2.5 million. Then you're gonna have to get it from PvPing other players. Moving on, this next one is a really funny glitch that I found while messing around with the love fruit. Everybody knows that the love fruit's F ability is a flamingo ride, but a pretty funny thing that you can do with this ability is actually ride boats while you're on the flamingo, which doesn't make any sense because how can you be on a flamingo and a boat at the same time? For this glitch, all you have to do is spawn in any type of boat in the game and then just simply hop on your flamingo. Then you simply have to sit in the driver's seat of the boat, but it's kind of hard to get into it on some boats. For example, when I spawn in the swan boat, I actually can't fly in the red from the top. I kind of have to do this weird thing where I have to go through the side and then the glitch ends up working. You can actually control the boat while you're on the flamingo. Pretty funny glitch if you ask me. Okay. Alright, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this next trick is for all you portal fruit users out there and this is something that I actually did not know until I started using the portal fruit a lot more. Did you know that you can actually teleport your friends with you? And this is a pretty cool trick if you want to just help your friends transport to other places with you. This is something that would save a lot of time. But overall, this trick doesn't help you much in PvP. It's just just kind of a trick that makes your life a little bit easier. Alright, next up we got a trick to do with the Awakened Buddha, and I know I have a lot of tricks with this fruit in my videos, but this one is also something that's really good. When you actually unlock the Awakened Buddha, one of the passive abilities you get is that you can literally walk on water without taking any damage. If you use this with dashing and other movement abilities, then you can actually go faster than most boats in the game. And I'm pretty sure the only boat that's actually faster is the Enforcer Boat, and many people don't have that, because you have to buy the Faster Boats Game Pass to get it. So in conclusion, if you have the Awakened Buddha fruit, it's actually faster to dash the islands instead of paying for a boat, spawning it in, and driving all the way over there. Okay, so this next one is about the Blocks Fruit Dealer, and this is a really simple trick, but for all the new players watching, this is gonna help you a ton through your progress in the game. I'm gonna be telling you about every single location that the Blocks Fruit Dealer spawns at. So the first one is obviously the Pirate Starter, and I think all of you have seen him here already. And next up is the Marine Starter, but it's just for the Marines. Middletown, Dress Rosa Rocks, Cafe at the second sea, Mansion in the third sea, then we got Port Town, the first location in the third sea. And there's actually no other locations that this NPC spawns. So if you want to buy some new fruits, now you know where to go. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be telling you guys about a fighting style that a lot of you might not know. The Electric Claw fighting style. And when it comes to PvP, this fighting style is literally the second best fighting style in the whole of blocks fruits and the way you get it is by upgrading the original electric fighting style and to do that you need a 400 mastery you need to find the previous npc hero who's located next to the longma boss at the floating turtle island then you have to talk to him and do the quest that requires you to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds and there's actually kind of a nice way to cheat this quest you can say you're home at the mansion you can use the light fruit or the portal fruit to get there and then after completing the quest you have to pay him the fee of 3 million belly along with 5,000 fragments and once you do that you can equip it from him at any 
time that you want. Overall, I do think that Shockman Karate is still a better fighting style for grinding, but when it comes to PvP, the only ability that beats this is God Human, because it's literally the most OP fighting style in the whole game. Everybody knows that there's a variety of titles that you can unlock in Bloxfruit, and a bunch of these titles are from awakening different fruits. When you awaken the Flame Fruit, you get the title called Flame Fist, and when you awaken the Ice Fruit, you get the Ice Queen and the Ice King title. But did you know that you don't have to fully awaken every single ability of the fruit to get these titles? In fact, you just have to awaken a singular ability. If you want to get the titles for every single awakening in the game, then you don't have to do as much work as you thought you would. And overall, this is a pretty decent trick for you guys out there now trying to get some titles. But at the end of the day, it's just a title. It's not like it gives you any extra buffs. So this trick is pretty average compared to the other amazing tricks on this list. Okay, so now I'm going to be telling you guys about a way to fight NPCs that will make your life 10 times easier. And it's something that I've been doing ever since I was a level 1 player in this game. I'm talking about the dash hitting technique and what i mean by this is exactly what it sounds like you literally just have to hit your enemy and dash away before they can hit you and the reason this is a really op way to grind especially for beginners is because what most people start off with is a sword or a combat style and to use a sword or a combat style you have to be really close to your opponent and using this method you can actually put most of your stat points into your combat damage instead of putting a bunch of it on defense because you won't be getting hit a lot when you use this technique but I mostly recommend this technique for beginners because it's not completely foolproof and you do end up getting hit a bunch of times. And when you're in places like the third C, one hit could be the end of you. Alright, this next trick is for all of you awakened dough users out there. It's a little trick about the rolling donut. And I only learned this after I actually started using the awakened dough food. And no, it's not being able to drive on water. Everybody already knows that. The thing I'm talking about is that the donut actually does damage to NPCs when you drive over them. And this is something that you do not get in the unawakened version of the dough and it's a pretty cool addition to the game because not only does it hit them it actually drags them along with you so you can deal consecutive damage to it but keep in mind since the movement ability the damage isn't as much as you expect it would be nevertheless it's still a really cool addition and you can use this when all of your abilities are on cooldown so next up is a pretty useful glitch that a bunch of you watching might already know i'm talking about flash stepping through walls and most of the time this trick is actually pretty useful more than you think it would be and when you're in indoor locations like the cafe at the second c you can actually use it to glitch out faster and i know it doesn't save much time but it's still a pretty useful trick to have especially since it's not the only place that you can use it at for example you can use it at the factory raid to glitch in before the raid even starts getting a head start on all the other players that come to do it and you can also use it to glitch underneath the map sometimes and find some really bizarre locations but overall it's not going to help you much in pvp unless you're trying to run away from some players Okay, so next up, we also got a pretty funny glitch that anybody in Blocks Foods can do. So all you have to do to see this glitch is simply equip the boat and drive it into the Fishman Island teleporter. And everybody knows that when you use the teleport in Fishman Island, it doesn't actually teleport you to the next teleporter. It teleports you directly onto the land. The boat actually glitches into the floor. It just starts shaking super hard. And if you actually walk into this, it sends you flying into the sky. Overall, this is just a pretty funny glitch and it doesn't have much practical use. Unless you somehow make use of it in a PvP fight, but it's really situational, so I doubt you're going to be using it for that. Okay, so this next trick is for you leopard fruit users out there, and I'm guessing there should be a ton of you guys, since this is literally one of the best PvP fruits in the whole of Blocks Fruits. And this is something that I don't see a lot of people talking about. It's the extra speed boost that you get while using your transformation. And I think this is something that's underestimated by a huge amount, and especially with the leopard fruit's brain dead left clicking ability. If you can just spam left click and keep running around your opponent in circles, then you're almost guaranteed to kill them, unless they have really good aim with your attacks. But overall, the speed ability from the transformation pairs really well with the other abilities of the fruit, making it one of the best suited fruits to PvP in boss fruits. Okay, so this next trick is going to be helping you a ton no matter what level you are. And it's always knowing what fruits are currently in stock with the Blocks Fruits dealer. And I know a lot of you might use Discord servers for this, but if you're isolated in the middle of an island and you actually don't have access to Discord, but you only have access to Google, well, all you have to do is simply Google up Blocks Fruit stock, and you click on the first link that shows, which takes you to the Blocks Fruits wiki. And here you can actually see every fruit that's in stock. Overall, a really good trick, and I recommend everybody to use this method. I'm going to be giving you a guide on every raid in Blocks Fruits, and also giving you some tricks that are going to turn you into a pro player. 
Okay, so raids were added to Blocks Roots in Update 11, and what they let you do is awaken the Blocks Fruit that you have. But keep in mind, it's not for every Blocks Fruit. There's only a certain amount of Blocks Fruits that you can awaken. The raid consists of five different islands, and each island being more difficult than the last one. And to advance to the next island, you must defeat all the enemies on the current island. And once you do that, you can just hop in a boat and drive over to the next one. And if you want to awaken a fruit, you must complete the raid with the exact fruit that you're trying to awaken. So for example, if you wanted to awaken your flame fruit, then you would have to complete the raid with your flame fruit. If you complete it with a different fruit such as the Buddha or dough, it will not work. And once you finish the raid with the right fruit, you'll be teleported to a place with a guy called the Awakenings Expert. And there, if you talk to him, you can pay him a certain amount of fragments to awaken one ability of your fruit. So depending on how many abilities your fruits have, you would have to do the raids four to six times to awaken a fruit fully. And keep in mind, they do cost a lot of fragments. So if you want to get your hands on those, you're going to have to grind a lot. So there's two types of raids in Blast Fruits. There's basic raids and advanced raids, but I'm going to be talking about basic for now. The way you can start a basic raid is by purchasing a special microchip from the mysterious scientist for either 100,000 belly or by trading in any physical fruit. But keep in mind, if you want to purchase it with money, then you can only do it once every two hours. And if you want to trade in a fruit, make sure you're trading in a really bad one. Then you can save up on some good fruits. And then all you have to do is head over into one of the capsules and press a button. And you can get a bunch of other friends or players to stand in the capsules with you and you'll all be teleported to the raid. And to purchase a chip, you have to be at least level 1,100 or higher. But it is possible to do a raid if you are below that level, but you have to find a friend to get the chip for you. And it's also not recommended to do the raids if you're below the level because the raids are pretty hard to complete if you're a low level. And trust me, I'm talking from experience. And the limit for players that can do a raid is 4, so you can only have a max of 4 players doing a single raid. Now let's talk a bit about advanced raids. Advanced raids are a completely different type of raids, which can be started by purchasing a chip from the mysterious scientist for either 1,000 fragments or 1 million belly. And the fruit that you have to trade in has to be a legendary fruit, unlike the other scientists. Currently in the game, there are only two advanced raids. There's the Phoenix Raid and the Doe Raid. And to do each of the raids, you need to complete a set of requirements before that. And the Phoenix Raid and Doe Raid both have different requirements. But if you have a friend that's completed the requirements, then you can do a Doe or Phoenix Raid without having completed them, which is pretty cool if you ask me. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the locations for the raids. In the second sea, you can head over to the hot and cold island, and then there should be a huge laboratory. And once you walk on site, enter the code red, blue, green, blue to the computer. And if you look over here to the side, you should see a secret passage opens up. And once you head in there and climb the ladder, that's where you find the raid place. But keep in mind, this is only for the second sea. For the third sea, it's a little bit different. In the third sea, you simply just have to head over to the main building at the castle on the sea. And that's pretty much it. If you ask me, the third sea is way simpler because you just need to drive to one island instead of entering in a bunch of codes. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about the requirements for the advanced raids. For the Doe raid, you need to start a Doe King raid by getting the God's Chalice and 10 Conjured Coca. Then you have to craft the Cake Chalice. So if you guys are doing this, I recommend you get a bunch of friends to help you. All you have to do is open a portal to the Doe King's realm. And then you have to do at least 10% of damage to him. And then once he's dead, you'll get a red key. And then you can open the door to the Cake Scientist room at the Sea of Treats. If you somehow lose the key, you'll still unlock the Doe raid when you rejoin. So don't panic if you die or get disconnected. So for the Phoenix raid, it's a little bit different. You need to get a 400 mastery on the Phoenix fruit. And you have to find the Stick Scientist, who's hiding in one of the Cake Towers at the Sea of Treats. All you have to do is just talk to the Stick Scientist, and then you get access to the Phoenix raid. So overall, the Phoenix raid is much easier to get than the Doe one. The Doe, well, the Doe makes up for that by being the best PvP fruit in the game. Like I mentioned before, depending on what fruit you want to awaken, you have to pay a different amount of fragments. And I'm going to be telling you guys how much fragments you exactly need for each fruit. To awaken the flame fruit, you need a total of 14,500 fragments. For the ice fruit, it's the exact same, 14,500. And for the quake fruit, it's 17,000. For the dark fruit, it's also 14,500. For the light fruit, it's also 14,500. For the spider fruit, we got 17,300. For the rumble fruit, 14,500. But if you also want to upgrade the pole to its second form, then it's a total of 19,500. For the magma fruit, it's also 14,500. A bit cheap if you ask me, because this is one of the best awakened fruits in the game. The Buddha is also 14,500. Again, really cheap. I think it should cost a bit more fragments, because you literally also get an extra ability. For the sand fruit, it's pretty fair, 14,500. And next up, we got the dough, which is a whopping 18,500. But it's really OP, so I definitely think this is worth it. And for the phoenix fruit, we 
also got 18,500. Literally the costliest fruits to awaken in the game. Okay, so there's actually two different reasons that people normally do raids. One is to awaken the fruit and the other one is to just grind a bunch of fragments. And if you're grinding fragments, you usually want to do the raids that are much easier because you get the exact same amount of fragments for each raid. So I'm going to be raiding these raids depending on whether you have or don't have the Buddha fruit. So the flame, magma, dark, and ice raids are pretty easy if you're a non-Buddha fruit user. Rumble and light are kind of intermediate and the hard ones are Buddha, Quake, Spider, Phoenix, Sand, and Doe. But if you have the Buddha fruit equipped it, then the easy raids are flame, light, Sand, Magma, Ice, Phoenix, and Dark. And the intermediate ones are Rumble, Spider, and Quake. And the only difficult ones with the Buddha Fruit are the actual Buddha Fruit and the Doe Raid. Reason the Buddha Raid is here is because even if you have the Buddha Fruit, you're going to be fighting against someone with the Awakened Buddha. So it's going to be really difficult. And this is known as one of the most difficult raids. And Doe pretty much speaks for itself. For how good the food is, the raid is extremely difficult to go with that. Okay, so now I'm going to be telling you guys about some raid facts that you should probably know before you start grinding them. So every Everyone knows you get a thousand fragments once you complete a raid. But did you know you also get 300 fragments if the time runs out? Keep in mind this is only if the time runs out. If you end up dying, you're gonna get absolutely nothing, even if you reach the fifth island. If you want to awaken every fruit in the game, then it's gonna cost you a total of 187,300 fragments, which is a huge amount. And that's not including the amount of money you have to pay to start each raid. Okay, so now let me tell you guys a little bit about the abilities that you're gonna be awakening while doing these raids. For the flame, the first ability is called Blue Fire Bullets, the second one is called Prominence Burst, the third one is called Flaming Vortex, and the special move is called Hell's Core. And the flame raid is widely considered the easiest raid by the whole community, so if you want to grind some fragments, this is definitely the raid you want to do. And you also get a total of 72,000 belly after killing all the enemies. Moving on to Ice, the first ability is Cold Storm, the second one is Glacial Surge, the third one is Ice Dragon, and the V ability is Absolute Zero. And this raid also contains a total of 72,000 belly. For the Quake, the first ability is Fatal Demolisher, the second one is Air Crusher, the third is Spatial Shockwave, and the V is Sea Quake. And this raid also contains a total of 72,000 belly of drops. And keep in mind if you're doing this Quake raid, be well prepared because it's one of the hardest raids. For the Dark raid, the first ability is Dimensional Slash, the second one is Astral Darkness, the third one is Endless Hole, and the fourth one is World of Darkness. And for this raid, you only get 68,000 belly of drops. So if you're trying to grind some belly, this is probably not the best one. Okay, next up is the Light. The Z ability is called Divine Arrow, the X ability is called Hand of the Emperor, the C ability is called Light Speed Destroyer, the V ability is called Wrath of God. And for this one, it goes a little bit lower, you only get 62,000 belly of drops. This is also definitely not one of the raids that you want to do if you're trying to grind belly. Next up, we got Spider, and the first ability is called Thermal Lacitration. The X is called Silk Prison, the C is called Eternal White, the V is called Heavenly Punishment. And for this one, you get a total of 65,000 belly of drops. Next up, we got Rumble. And for this this one, the first ability is called Lightning Beast, the second one is called Thunderstorm, the third one is called Sky Judgment, and the V ability, which is a Spirit Bomb, is called Thunderball Destruction. Pretty cool if you ask me. And this raid contains a total of 64,000 belly of drops. Moving on, we got Magma. The first ability is called Magma Shower. The X ability is called Volcanic Assault. The C ability is called Great Magma Hound. The V ability is called Volcanic Storm. And for this one, you get a total of 72,000 belly of drops. And the boss for this raid deals a huge amount of damage, so be careful while you're doing it. Next up, we're on to the Buddha. The Z ability is called Shift, the second one is called Heavenly Impact, the C ability is called Light of Annihilation, and the V ability is called Twilight of the Gods. And we also got a special F ability for this one, Retribution Dash. And this one's pretty cool because you just pick up an enemy and slam him into the ground. And this raid gives you a total of 72,000 belly of drops. Moving on, we got Sand. The first ability is called Desert Blade, the X one is called Sand Coffin, the C ability is called Sandstorm, and the V ability is called Deep Sand. And this raid gives you a total of 64,000 thousand belly of drops. Now everybody's favorite, we got Doe. First ability is called Doe Punches, which is actually the passive one, so this is not a specific ability. The Z ability is called Missile Jab. The X ability has two forms. One is Pacey River when you're on the ground, and the other one is when you're mid-air. They're both kind of different abilities. The C ability is called Piercing Clothes Sign, and this one's also pretty cool. Then the V ability is called Doe Fist Fuslide, and the F ability is called Scorching Donut. And this raid gives you a total of 62,000 belly of drops. And next up, we got the Phoenix. The first ability is just a passive ability similar to the Doe. The Z ability is called Cremation Cannon, the X ability is called Blue Flames, the C ability is called Flame Exodus, and the V ability is called Blazing Plumage. And this raid gives you a good amount of belly, but I'm not sure about the exact amount. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you a guide on every quest in Blocks Fruits. I'm also gonna be telling you about some secret quests that you might have not known existed. 
So the first quest you actually equipped in the game depends on whether you choose marine or pirate. If you chose marine, then you start on the marine starter island, and you get your quest from the marine leader, and he only consists of one quest, which is the trainee. The trainee is just level 5, gives you 300 XP and 350 belly per kill. But if you've chosen a pirate, then you start on the pirate starter island, and the person that gives you the quest is called a bandit quest giver, and obviously the quest that you get is bandit. And just like the trainee, the bandits are also level 5, gives you 300 XP, and a total of 350 belly drop. Next up, you move on to the jungle island. And here you have a different quest giver. He's called the adventurer. And he gives you a total of three quests. The first one is monkey, which you have to be level 10 to equip. It gives you 2,300 XP and 800 belly. Next up is the gorilla, which you have to be level 15 to fight. And this one gives you 4,500 XP along with 1,200 belly. Next up, we got the first boss on this list, the gorilla king. And you have to be level 20 to equip this quest. It gives you a total of 9, 1500 XP and 2000 belly. And since it's a boss, it obviously has hockey, so even if you have an elemental food, you'll take damage from this one. The next island you move to is called the Pirate Village, and the quest giver is called the Pirate Adventurer. And he also gives you a total of three different quests. The first one is Pirate, which you have to be level 30 to equip, and it gives you a total of 13,000 XP, along with 3000 belly. And the pirates actually use a weapon called the Cutlass, and these are the first enemies on this list that actually start using weapons. Next up, we got everybody's favorite. NPC the brutes and you have to be level 40 to accept this quest it gives you a total of 22,000 XP and 350 belly and the brutes use an iron mace and last of all for this island we got the boss buggy which you have to be level 55 to equip and he gives you a total of 45,000 XP along with 8,000 belly and this boss buggy actually has a chop fruit so even if you have hockey on with your swords you won't be able to do damage moving on to the desert the quest giver's name is the desert adventurer and he only gives you a total of two different quests first First up is the Desert Bandits, which you have to be level 60 to equip, and it gives you a total of 45,000 XP with 4,000 belly, and these guys also use the Cutlass as a weapon. Next up is the Desert Officers, which you have to be level 75 to fight, and they give you a total of 65,000 XP along with 4,500 belly, and these guys also use the Cutlass, so they're pretty similar to the Desert Bandits. And that's it for the Desert Island. Moving on, we got the Frozen Village, and the quest giver's name is literally just Villager. It consists of three quests, and the first one is Snow Bandit, which you have to be level 90 to equip. And this quest gives you a total of 90,000 XP along with 5,000 belly. And they use katanas as a weapon. Next up is the snowman, which you have to be level 100 to equip. And this one gives you a total of 150,000 XP along with 5,500 belly. And these guys have no weapons, so they just use the basic combat. The last one for this island is the boss fight, and this guy is literally called the Yeti. You have to be level 105 to accept this quest, and you get 220,000 XP for this one, along with 10,000 and belly. Moving on to Marine Fortress, the quest giver's name is Marine, and this doesn't change even if you're a pirate. Pretty weird if you ask me. The first one is Chief Petty Officer, and you have to be level 120 to accept this quest, and he gives you a total of 225,000 XP, along with 6,000 belly, and these guys use dual katanas as their weapon. And the next one is literally a boss, the Vice Admiral, and you have to be level 130 to accept this quest. He gives you a total of 415,000 XP, along with 15,000 and belly. And this boss uses the triple katana, so be careful for this one if you're a new player. And next up, moving on to Skylands, the quest giver's name is Sky Adventurer. And like the name says, the first quest he gives you is the Sky Bandit, which you have to be level 150 to accept. It gives you a total of 315,000 XP, along with 7,000 belly. And the weapons they use is a dual katana. Next up is the Dark Master, and you have to be level 175 to accept this quest. It gives you a total of 450,000 XP, along with 7,500 belly, and these guys use the iron maze, so they're pretty similar to the brutes in the pirate village. Moving on to the prison, we actually have two quest givers at the island. The first one is called the jail keeper, and this guy gives you two quests. The first one is prisoners, which you have to be level 190 to accept, and this quest gives you a total of 550,000 XP, along with 7,000 belly. Next one is dangerous prisoners, and you have to be level 210 to accept this quest. It gives you a total of 780,000 XP, along with 7,500 belly. Moving on to the second quest giver at this location, he's called the Head Jailer, and he gives you a total of three quests, and these are all boss fights, so be careful with this one. The first one is the Warden, which you have to be level 220 to accept. It gives you a total of 850,000 XP with 6,000 belly. Next up is the Chief Warden, which you have to be level 230 to accept. It literally gives you 1 million XP with 10,000 belly. Last for this island is the Swan Boss, and this is the hardest boss on this list so far. You have to be level 240 to 
to fight him and he gives you a total of 1.6 million XP along with 15,000 belly on top of that. And he also has the spider fruit so he's a really powerful boss. Moving on to the next island, it's called the Colosseum. And the guy that gives you the quest is called Colosseum Quest Giver. He gives you a total of two quests. The first one is Togo Warriors which you have to be level 250 to accept. And this one gives you 1.1 million XP along with 7,000 belly. The next one is Gladiators which you have to be level 275 to accept. And this one gives you 1.3 million XP along with 7,500 XP. And both of these guys actually don't have any special ability when they fight so they're also using the basic combat. The next island is the Magma Village, and the name of the quest giver is the Mayor. The first quest is Military Soldiers, and you have to be level 300 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 1.7 million XP and 8,250 belly. They use katanas as weapons, and they actually have 50% of their hockey unlocked. Next up is the Military Spies, and you have to be level 325 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 2 million XP and 8,500 belly. These guys have flash them, so be careful when fighting them. And the boss for this one is the Magma Admiral and you have to be level 350 to fight this one. And he gives you a total of 15,000 belly. And obviously he has the magma fruit. Moving on to Underwater City. The quest giver's name is King Neptune. And the first quest is Fishman Warriors. You have to be level 375 to accept this quest. And you get 3 million and 50 XP for completing this one. Along with 8,750 belly. And these guys use katanas as weapons. Next up is the Fishman Commandos. And you have to be level 400 to fight these guys. They give you a total of 3.3 5 million XP along with 9,000 belly and these guys use triple katanas as their weapons and the boss for this one is the fishman lord and you have to be level 425 to fight this guy gives you a total of 4.25 million XP along with 15,000 belly and this guy has a trident as his weapon and it can be pretty annoying to fight against next up is upper sky islands and we actually have two quest givers for this place the first one is called mole and he gives you a total of three different people to fight the first one is the gods guards which you have to be level 450 to accept and they give you 4.25 million xp along with 875,000 belly and these guys use dual headed blades as their weapons so be careful when fighting them next up is the shandas and you have to be level 475 to accept this one and they give you 5 million xp along with 9,000 belly and these guys use the basic combat as their weapon Next up is the Boss Whisper, and you have to be level 500 to fight this guy. He gives you a total of 5.7 million XP along with 15,000 belly. And he uses a bazooka, but it's a gun, and everybody knows that guns are pretty bad. The name of the next quest giver in this place is called Gonfall Adventurer. And the first one he gives you is called Royal Squads, and you have to be level 525 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 5.8 million XP along with 9,500 belly. Next up is the Royal Soldiers, and you have to be level 550 to to fight these guys. It gives you a total of 6.3 million XP along with 9,750 belly. And we got the final boss for Upper Sky Islands and this guy is literally called Thunder God and he's pretty hard to fight against. You have to be level 575 to accept this quest and you get 8 million XP from it along with 20,000 belly. This guy literally has the rumble fruit along with the pole first form. Moving on to the final island in the first sea, Fountain City. And the guy that gives you the quest for this one is Freezeberg Quest Giver and he has a total of of three quests for you. The first one is Gallery Pirates, which you have to be level 625 to fight. They give you 7.5 million XP along with 10,000 belly. These guys use a pretty basic weapon, literally the katana. Next up is the Gallery Captains, and you have to be level 650 to fight these guys. They give you 8.5 million XP along with 10,000 belly. They also use katanas, but they have hockey, so be careful. Next up is the final boss, Cyborg, and you have to be level 675 to fight this guy. He gives you a total of 10 million XP along with 20,000 belly. Moving on to the second sea, the first island is called Kingdom of Rose Area 1. And the quest giver's name is Area 1 Quest Giver. The first quest he gives you is Raider, and you have to be level 700 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 8.75 million XP along with 10,250 belly. Next up is Mercenary, and you have to be level 725 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 9.75 million XP along with 10,500 belly. Keep in mind, both of these opponents literally use the basic combat, so they should be pretty easy to fight. And the boss for this area is called Diamond. You have to be level 750 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 12.5 million XP along with 25,000 belly. And he uses a longsword as his weapon. The next quest giver is called Area 2 Quest Giver and this guy is located in the Kingdom of Rose Area 2. 
The first one, he gives you Swan Pirate. And you have to be level 775 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 11.5 million XP along with 10,750 belly. And these guys use katanas as their weapon. Next up is Factory Staff, and you have to be level 800 to fight these guys. It gives you a total of 13 million XP along with 11,000 belly. And these guys use a variety of fruits. They use the Bomb, Smoke, and Spike, and it's completely random which one spawns in. And the boss for this area is Jeremy, and you have to be level 850 to accept this quest. It gives you a total of 16 million XP along with 25,000 belly. And this guy has a spring fruit, so he bounces around quite a lot. Moving on to the green zone, the quest giver's name is Marine Quest Giver, and the first quest he gives you is Marine Lieutenant. And you have to be level 875 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 15 million XP along with 11,250 belly. And these guys use katanas as their weapon. Next up is Marine Captain, and you have to be level 900 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 16.5 million XP along with 11,500 belly. And these guys use hot along with a katana. And the boss for this area is called Fujita. You have to be level 925 to accept this quest and it gives you 19 million XP along with 25,000 fragments. And this guy uses a gravity fruit along with a gravity cane. A lot of gravity in that. Moving on to the graveyard island. The quest giver's name is Graveyard Quest Giver and he consists a total of two quests. The first one is zombie and you have to be level 950 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 19 million XP along with 11,750 belly. Next up is Vampires, and you have to be level 975 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 20.5 million XP along with 12,000 belly. And these guys use flash steps, so they move around quite a lot. Moving on to the Snow Mountains, we got the Snow Quest Giver. The first one, he gives you Snow Trooper, and you have to be level 1,000 to accept this quest. It gives you 22.5 million XP along with 12,250 fragments. These guys use the dual katanas as weapons. Next up is the Winter Warrior, and you have to be level 1050 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 24 million XP along with 12,500 belly. Moving on to the next island, Hot and Cold. And this area is separated into two parts, so you have two different quest givers. The first one is the Ice Quest Giver, and the people you fight are called Lab Subordinates. You have to be level 1100 to accept this quest, and it gives you a total of 25.5 million XP along with 12,250 belly. And these guys use the pipe as their weapon. Next up is the Horned Warrior, and you have to be level 1125 to take on these guys. It gives you a total of 25 million XP along with 12,500 belly. And they all have the Ice Fruit, so be careful with this one. Next up is the boss for the Ice Area, the Smoke Admiral, and you have to be level 1150 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 32.5 million XP along with 20,000 belly. And this one's an Elemental, so be careful if you don't have Hockey. The next quest giver for this area is the fire quest giver, and he looks really similar to the ice quest giver. The quest he gives you is magma ninjas, and you have to be level 1175 to accept this one. It gives you a total of 29 million XP along with 12,250 belly. And these guys use a dual headed blade as a weapon. Next up is a lava pirate, and you have to be level 1200 to fight these guys. It gives you a total of 31 million XP along with 12,500 belly. These guys use the magma fruit, and this is a pretty powerful fruit, so be careful when fighting these guys. Moving on to the cursed ship, we got two quest givers here. The first one is the rare crew quest giver, and he gives you the ship deckhand. You have to be level 1250 to fight these guys, and you get 33 million XP. It also gives you 12,250 belly. Next up is the ship engineer, and you have to be level 1275 to fight these guys. It gives you a total of 35.5 million XP, along with 12,500 fragments. And these guys use flash step and they have hockey. The next quest giver is called the front crew quest giver and this guy gives you the ship steward and you have to be level 1300 to fight these guys. It gives you a total of 37.5 million XP and 12,250 belly and these guys use the cutlass to fight. Pretty basic sword. Next up is the ship officer and you have to be level 1325 to fight these guys. They give you a total of 39.5 million XP along with 12,500 belly and these guys also use the cutlass but the crucial difference is that they have hockey. Moving on to the ice castle. The quest giver's name is Frost Quest Giver and he tells you to fight the Arctic Warriors. The level requirement for this is 1300.
150 and it gives you 41 million XP along with 12,250 belly. These guys use the katana to fight so it's pretty basic. Next up is a snow lurker. You have to be level 1,375 to fight these guys and they give you 43 million XP along with 12,500 belly. And these guys all have the ice fruit combined with hockey so be careful while fighting these guys. And the boss fight for this place is the Awakened Ice Admiral. You have to be level 1400 to fight this guy and he gives you 45 million XP along with 20,000 belly. And like the name states, he has the Awakened Ice Fruit. And this is the first Awakened Fruit on this list, so be careful when fighting this guy. Next up is the last island on the second sea, the Forgotten Island. And this guy is called the Forgotten Quest Giver. Gives you a total of 3 people to fight. First up is the Sea Soldier, which you have to be level 1425 to equip. Gives you a total of 47 million XP along with 12,250 belly. And these guys all use water kung fu. Next up is the Water Fighter. You have to be level 1450 to fight these guys. It gives you 49 million XP along with 12,500 belly. And these guys also use water kung fu, but they actually have hockey as well. Next up is the final boss of the second sea, the Tide Keeper. You have to be level 1475 to fight these guys. And they give you 51 million XP along with 12,500 belly. This guy literally has a dragon trident and he summons a sea beast. So you're basically fighting a boss along with a mini boss. And this quest is pretty hard to complete. Now moving on to the third C. The first quest giver is literally called Pirate Port Quest Giver. And he's located at Port Town. This is literally the first quest you get once you enter the third C. And it's Pirate Millionaire. And you have to be level 1500 to fight these guys. They give you 53 million XP along with 13,000 belly. And they use the Bicento as a weapon. Next is the Pistol Billionaire, and these guys are tough, so you have to be level 1525 to fight them. They give you a total of 55.5 million XP along with 15,000 belly, and these guys use a refined musket as a weapon. Next up is the boss, and this guy is called Stone. You have to be level 1550 to fight him, and he gives you 60 million XP along with 25,000 belly. And this guy has the bomb fruit, so he shouldn't be that hard to fight against. Moving on to Hydra Island, we got two quest givers for this place because this island is massive, just like every island on the third sea. First is the Amazon quest giver, and the people you fight is the Dragon Crew Warrior. You have to be level 1575 to accept this quest and you get 58 million XP for completing it, along with 13,000 belly, and they use a longsword as a weapon. Next is the Dragon Crew Archer, and you have to be level 1600 to fight these guys. It gives you 60.5 million XP along with 15,000 belly, and these guys use the Serpent Bow. Moving on to the second quest giver, it's called the Amazon Area 2 quest giver. First is a female islander and you have to be level 1625 to accept this one. And it gives you a total of 62.5 million XP along with 13,000 belly. These guys use the iron mace to fight. Next is a giant islander and you have to be level 1650 to accept this one. Gives you a total of 64.5 million XP along with 15,000 belly. These guys have nothing but hockey, so they shouldn't be too hard to fight. And the boss for this area is the Island Empress, and you have to be level 1,675 to fight her. Gives you a total of 70 million XP along with 30,000 belly. And of course, since she's the Island Empress, she has the love fruit. Moving on to the Great Tree. And you only got one quest giver for this one, which is kind of surprising. He's called the Marine Tree Quest Giver, and the first people you fight is Marine Commodore. You have to be level 1700 to accept this one, and you get 68 million XP, along with 13,000 belly. These guys use the dual katana, and they have hockey. Next up is the Marine Rear Admiral, and you have to be 1725 to take these guys on. They give you 70.5 million XP along with 15,000 belly. And they use the spin fruit, so they shouldn't be too hard to fight. Next up is the Kilo Admiral. You have to be level 1750 to fight this one. And you get a total of 78 million XP along with 35,000 belly. And just like the name implies, they got the Kilo fruit. Moving on to the Floating Turtle. And surprisingly, we got three quest givers on this one island. The first one is Turtle Adventurer Quest Giver, and you fight the Fishmen Raiders. You have to be level 1775 for this one. It gives you a total of 73 million XP along with 13,000 belly. And they all use the Shark Saw. Next up is the Fishman Captain, and you have to be level 1800 to fight these ones. It gives you a total of 75.5 million XP along with 15,000 belly. And these guys use Tridents to fight. Pretty fish-like if you ask me. 
Moving on to the next quest giver, this guy's called Deep Forest Quest Giver. And the people you first fight is the Forest Pirates, and you need to be level 1825 to fight them. They give you a total of 78 million XP along with 13,000 belly. Next up is the Mythological Pirate, and you have to be level 1850 to fight them. You get 81 million XP along with 13,000 belly. And these guys use the electric fighting style, so they can stun you pretty well. Now we got another boss, and this guy is called Captain Elephant, and you have to be level 1875 to fight him. You get 90 million XP along with 40,000 belly, and he uses the twin hooks to fight. Moving on to the third quest giver, the Deep Forest Area 2 quest giver. First up is the Jungle Pirate, which you have to be level 1900 to accept. It gives you a total of 85 million XP along with 13,000 belly. And these guys use Dark Step to fight. Next up is the Musketeer Pirate, and you have to be level 1925 to fight them. They give you a total of 87.5 million XP along with 15,000 belly. And they use the Cavendir to fight. Moving on, we got the Beautiful Pirate, and you have to be level 1950 to fight this. You get a total of 100 million XP along with 50,000 belly. And they also use the Cavendir to fight. Moving on to the Haunted Castle, we also got two quest givers for this place. The first one is the Haunted Castle quest giver number one. I tell you to fight the Reborn Skeleton, which you have to be level 1975 to fight. Gives you a total of 90 million XP along with 13,000 belly. And they use Dark Step to fight against you. Next up is the Living Skeleton, and you have to be level 2000 to fight them. You get a total of 93.5 million XP along with 13,250 belly. These guys are pretty powerful since they use Flash Step with the Superhuman fighting style. Moving on to the next quest giver, this one's called Haunted Castle Quest Giver number 2. Tell you to fight the Demonic Soul, which requires you to be level 2025. Gives you a total of 96 million XP along with 13,500 belly. These guys use the Flame Fruit. Next up is the Possessed Mummy, and you need to be level 2050 to fight them. You get a total of 98.5 million XP along with 13,750 belly. And these guys use the Dark Fruit, so they should be pretty powerful. Moving on to the Sea of Treats. And this place has a whopping total of 7 quest givers, literally the most in any island in the whole game. First up is the ice cream quest giver, and this guy you need to fight the ice cream chef, and you have to be level 2125 to do that. It gives you a total of 105 million XP along with 14,200 belly, and these guys use dark step to fight. Next is the ice cream commander, and you have to be level 2150 to fight them. Gives you a total of 107.5 million XP along with 14,300 belly. These guys use a dual headed blade along with hockey. Next up is the boss and she's called Cake Queen. You have to be level 2175 to fight her and she gives you a total of 112.5 million XP along with 30,000 belly. She uses the body sword and obviously she's a boss. Next up is the Cake Quest Giver number 1. And for this one, you gotta fight the Cookie Crafters, which you have to be level 2200 to take on. Gives you a total of 110 million XP along with 14,200 belly. And these guys use the Warden Sword to fight. Next is the Cake Card, and you have to be level 2225 to fight. Gives you a total of 112.5 million XP along with 14,300 belly. And these guys use the Thruple Katana to fight. Moving on to Cake Quest Giver number 2. For this one, you gotta fight the Baking Staff, and they have a level requirement of 2250 and you get 150 million xp from them along with 14400 belly and these guys have nothing apart from hockey next is the head baker and you have to be level 2275 to fight them gives you a total of 117.5 million xp along with 14500 belly these guys use hockey and they have the flame fruit. Moving on to the chocolate quest giver number one. For this one, you gotta fight the Coca Warriors, and you have to be level 2300 to do that. Gives you a total of 120 million XP along with 14,600 belly. Next up is the chocolate bar battler, and you have to be level 2325 to fight this one. It gives you a total of 122.5 million XP along with 14,700 belly. And both of the people from this quest giver actually have nothing except hockey. Moving on to chocolate quest giver number 2. For this one you gotta fight the sweet thief and you have to be level 2350 to do that. Gives you a total of 125 million XP along with 14,800 belly. Next is the candy rebel and you have to be level 2375 to fight these ones. Gives you a total of 127.5 million XP along with 14,900 belly. And both the people from this quest giver also only use hockey. Moving on to the final quest giver of the whole game. 
for now. We got the Candy Cane Quest Giver. For this one, you gotta fight the Candy Pirates, which have a level requirement of 2,400. And you get a total of 129 million XP from these guys, along with 14,800 belly. And the final NPCs for the whole of Bloss Fruits. These guys are called Snow Demons, and you have to be level 2425 to fight them. They give you a whopping amount of 131 million XP, along with 14,700 belly. 